Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to rank the Slappy World books. Oh wait, no, I already did that. I am here to rank the covers because I thought that this would be an easy video to do and also something worth doing just for fun. Uh, you know, this is kind of fun because, you know, we're basically disregarding the story. Almost. You know, there are a couple of exceptions where, you know, there are just things that are so bad about the covers that uh, it just really, really downgrades the covers even more than they already are. Uh, so, already are. <laughs> that sounds funny. Number 20... The worst cover is I Am Slappy's Evil Twin. Now, if I didn't know about the plot, I could probably put this cover maybe in the lower Bs. Yeah, about there. It is kind of a fun cover. I like the two dummies, and I think that it's a, it's very colorful. But the one problem, the biggest like FU about this cover is the fact that they couldn't even tell the artist that one of the dummy's eyes in this book is supposed to be brown, which is a big part of the plot. You know, it's literally a part of the plot at the end where it's like they have to distinguish Slappy from the other guy, and the only way they can do that is by looking into their eyes. And the cover is so shitty that they can't even get that one little detail and I just think that's really careless and stupid. I think that it's it's just, it's terrible. Like, seriously? That's just, that's inexcusable. Number 19, this cover is, is garbage. Uh, it is, it is really, really bad. They call me the Night Howler. You know, this, this cover, <laughs> it's, it's so lazy. It's kind of like a callback to, Welcome to Camp Nightmare, but it's it's so boring. It's so minimalistic in a bad way. You know, I, I did a cover... Well, I did a... It wasn't a cover. It was a poster uh, for the vampire film that I ended up um, temporarily stopping making. And it was a similar type of thing to this, but it was a lot more detailed than this. And what it was was... Uh, you see these shoes, they're on this hardwood floor in this uh, store, and in the back of the room there's a curtain, and there's like a creepy thing behind the curtain or something, and there's blood all over the floor. And, you know, that that poster is minimalistic, and it's a lot better than this. This is just like you have eyes, and you have hands that are reaching out. It, it's just completely, completely bizarre i mean i don't know what i mean it's clear that the artist saw this title they call me the night howler and he was like i don't know what the fuck this is so i'm just gonna do <laughs> this random picture i'm just gonna kind of you know go with like a generic creepy picture i mean you could you could attach a lot of different titles to this picture you can make up a title like night of the stalker and you could put this picture on it. You could put uh, Frenzy of the Cat People. You could put this picture on it. You know, like, that's why this is so bad. is because it's so unpersonal and generic. Number 18 is Fifth Grade Zombies. This cover is is really exemplary of a lot of modern Goosebumps' problems. And how childish and goofy the series has gotten. Instead of uh, you know getting better, it's gotten worse. And this cover is just very, very cartoony. It reminds me of something you'd see in The Simpsons. And I really don't like it. Number 17 is Attack of the Jack. This is another kind of like lazy poster or lazy cover. Where you just have a character... And a background, and uh, that's it. And it's not really... I mean, another problem with this is that this character, 
they make him look like he's really big on this cover, but then in the book, he's like this tiny little jack-in-the-box guy, and so it's just kind of laughable how he's so huge on the cover. Uh, it looks very childish and goofy, and I really don't like it. It doesn't even look like Goosebumps to me. It looks like some random children's book series. Number 16 is Escape from Shutter Mansion. This this cover is another just generic cover that does not scream goosebumps to me. Uh, it is a little bit better than the other ones so far, but not by very much. Number 15 is Judy and the Beast. This is another cover that's exactly like Attack of the Jack, and it just shows that like you could really do this with any book title, you could uh, have a character, have a themed background, and you could do it like this. Like it's 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 like there's a template, and uh, they're just like copying from the same template. Being very lazy. Number fourteen is Slappy Beware. This cover is fine, but it just it's another thing where it's very exemplary of the problems of Goosebumps uh, as of late. Like, now it's become where it's all about Slappy. And it's really not. Like, Goosebumps, Slappy is just one little character in Goosebumps. He's not the main thing that people think about when they think about Goosebumps. I guarantee it. They could have had other characters with Slappy on this cover and they could have had Slappy at the top or something, but instead it's just a generic picture of Slappy's face, and he's got the red eyes, and uh, it's really also kind of a misleading cover, because it looks like Slappy's going to be really, really scary in this book, but then in the actual story, it's all about how he can't, uh, he can't get anything done, right? So, it's kind of like, what were they thinking with this cover? Like, let's just make a generic cover. Number 13 is The Dummy Meets the Mummy. This is another really generic cover. Very childish, cartoony, uh, looks like a Scooby-Doo episode or something. They could have made, like, an homage to Universal Monster movies... Uh, when they did this cover, and instead of that, they just took the easy way out. Next up is, is uh, number 12, Diary of a Dummy. This cover is so jam-packed of stupidity that I can't even begin to, like, talk about, like, number one, like, Slappy is coming out of the diary, which is really retarded. Uh, number two... There's, like, green ooze coming out of the diary with, like, a skull in the green ooze. And I just, I really hate this cover. Like, it is so messy, and it's so, like, just all over the place that you really can't take it seriously. So it's another one that comes off as very goofy and, and childish. And number 11 is, uh, what was it called? My Friend Slappy? Oh, okay. It's funny because for the longest time, I thought that this was Slappy in like the freezer of a supermarket. Because when you when you when you go back when you zoom out of this picture, it looks like Slappy has like a supermarket apron on, and he's like sitting inside of a freezer. So in other words, this cover is just kind of bad because like you can zoom out and think that it's something else that it's really not. Number 10 is Monster Blood is Back. This is kind of a fun cover, actually. Uh, it got me kind of excited for the book. Uh, it is also childish and cartoony, uh, but it's a fun cover. Even though all of these covers kind of suck in comparison to the original covers. Like, I don't know... Like, it is such, like, a mind-boggling thing that they got rid of Tim Jacobus and they got, like, this person to do these generic covers. 
because it's 2024. Well, actually, no, it wasn't because it, they're doing a new series now. And actually, the new series has better covers, I guess. I don't know. So far, uh, next up, number is it nine? Yeah, number nine is uh, Revenge of the Invisible Boy. It's funny because this one, it's it's okay, but I saw an alternate cover for this book, and it is actually really, really cool. And uh, I really wish that they stuck with that alternate cover. Uh, but still, this, this is pretty good. Like, it's, it's a nice little cover. It also looks childish, though. Very childish. Number nine is It's Alive, It's Alive. I really like the purple in this cover. I really like, uh, I like, it looks like it could be really, really good. You know, uh, even though I, I wish the, the female robot had boobs and I wish she didn't look so generic because she looks like a, an AI drawing or something. Number eight is Please Do Not Feed the Weirdo. This is the best book of the series, uh, but the cover is just also kind of generic. I mean, it's kind of cool with, like, the monster hand coming out of the crate. I could see this cover, uh, if done right, being in the original series. So there's that. Uh, but it's just, again, it's generic. Number seven is Fright Night. You know, I really, really like this cover, even though it's childish and cartoony, uh, because I really like how colorful it is. I love all the balloons, and I love the monster peeking out from behind the balloons. Uh, this is also a cover that could have been really, really scary if done right. And let's see, where am I at? Number five is Slappy Birthday to You. This is a good cover. It's kind of a simple cover of like Slappy tearing apart, uh, tearing open a birthday present, and the birthday present is himself, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Number four is The Ghost of Slappy. I think that Slappy looks really creepy in this cover. I really love the blue coloring in this uh, cover, and I think it's actually one of the better ones. Number three is Night of the Squawker. This cover looks really, really awesome. I mean, it's, it's just a very colorful cover. Uh, it doesn't really look like a Goosebumps cover, but it's a very nicely done cover. Number two is... And you guys are going to laugh at this. Haunting with the Stars. This cover is awesome. It really looks like this book could be like one of the best of the series. Uh, it's very colorful. I really like the space theme. And I love how the two dummies uh, are in kind of like silhouette at the top. So you don't see their faces. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. Number one is Slappy in Dreamland. This cover is what actually made me want to review the series. Uh, this cover I thought was really, really creepy and really uh, cool. And I felt like if the series was anything like this cover, that it could have been really, really good. You know, like this cover is actually creepy. You know, Slappy underneath the bed like that. It's a very, very creepy image. And I love all the colors and everything. So yeah, anyways, that is my ranking of the Slappy World covers. In general, I think a lot of these covers are bad because they're very generic and kiddish. But then there are some good ones in there that I really, really liked. So anyways, please like this video and comment and tell me, would you like to see any other rankings for the Slappy World series? Because it would kind of be good to like not have to do very much of anything you know except for do, do like a ranking video i don't know i was thinking of like maybe ranking the villains 
of Slappy World, if you guys would like to see that. Uh, or maybe ranking the main characters, even though that would be kind of, uh, that would be kind of hilarious, because they all kind of suck. And then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest reviews. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.